What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerdcast for the next episode of Enter the Gungeon. My name is Splattercat. Very happy to have you here today as we take control of the pie lot. Not a pie little, he's a pie lot. He's very, very good at it. That's how you know somebody's got a high skill level at maneuvering devices. Is, is that what you would call it? Maneuvering vehicles. That would be even better. See, that's more descriptive. He's the pie lot, not the pie little. Got to start out with some puns and some bad wordplay. That's the only thing we do here at the Nerd Castle. We are ready to play the game again. I hope you enjoyed the last couple episodes. I'm finding the game to be a lot of fun. This is one of those solid titles. It's been a very, very gifted season for indie games. No lie, it's been a crazy season. For the last two weeks, there have been a lot of fantastic games coming out. Hyperlight Drifter, Enter the Gungeon, Adrift. It's just been wild and crazy, and it's been such a pleasure to be able to produce it all for you. Uh, it looks like there's hieroglyphics over here. I never noticed those before, but there's like... Guys, those guys run away. That guy's like, nah, man, I don't even care because there's a bullet coming at my pyramid. And then that guy got reduced to either a ghost or ash. And then it looks like guns reigned supreme for a little while. These guys were like, yay, we can put our guns on tables. So that's the invention of the table right there. I know the gun takes center stage. But actually, they invented the gun long before the table. Then they realized they could kill time with it. And so somebody got really, really shiny. After that, he got very wealthy with the knowledge that he could kill time, and he used it to just lacquer himself. And that's the story of Enter the Gungeon. Let's go on in. There's nothing else going on right now. There's not much we can play around with on the surface. Luckily, I'm all out of the little hegemon bucks or whatever they are, the hegemony dollars. What does his pistol do? Oh, yeah, I forgot. He's got a laser pistol. I forgot about that. I love the little... Oh, it vents, too, when it opens up. I love how every gun is different in this game. Like, every one has its own little graphical flourishes. Like, sometimes they spin the gun around. Sometimes the gun vents a whole bunch of steam when you reload it. Very, very cool stuff. Attention to detail that makes the game feel deeper and better. And I call things like that, like, artificial depth. And so, for example, when you put little graphical upgrades in your game, like, it doesn't really affect the overall gameplay. Like, it's not adding a new mechanic or anything like that. But it's a little thing that showed you cared enough to put a ton of random detail into the game. And I think players lock onto that. It's things that they remember about playing your game. It's nice to see a game that isn't like a thousand miles wide and like two inches deep, you know what I mean? Which happens a lot with hyped games. It's good to see that this did not fall into that particular pit trap. I know, I know, a thousand miles wide, two inches deep, and there's always going to be that guy who like, just like your mom. There's always that guy, every time around. Every time around, we can't have convers we can't have civilized conversations anymore because of your mom jokes. I'm gonna flip that thing right there to buy myself a little bit of time. Oh, I broke my own table. This is why they don't let me go into the IKEA anymore. I'm bad for merchandise. I'll break it before it's even out of the box. I do need to go to IKEA. I need more bookshelves. I find that my house is always lacking in storage space. Like, I need to go buy, like, three more bookshelves, and I just never go do it. And so I just have books stacked up, games stacked up, all over the place, next to the walls, like, where the bookcase would actually go. Like, I really, really, really need to go and make sure that... I oh, we got a bunch of shelves in here. Yes, please. That guy's got a Gat, an AK-47. He's popping off all kinds of rounds. That book over there looks very, very frustrated with the fact that nobody reads them anymore. Like, tablets, why? Why you do these tablets? Because they're more, because they're more efficient. They're easier to use. Oh, hey, what's going on over here? There was a switch that got flicked. That one looks so peaceful. It's almost like he's sleeping. I can't put him out of his misery, though. That bullet looks like it got knocked the hell out by that shotgun. Oh, no, it's being stabbed in his butt. That's what it is. Well, look, I assume the bottom of the bullet is the butt, just like with the rest of us, and so it's being shivved in the butt. Can't really tell, though. Enter the gungeon, we got ghosts, and they got AKs. We're gonna have to move quick on that one, otherwise he's gonna take us out. He's got an N. It's his favorite letter, right before OP. That's why he fires it as, because N is before OP. And so you gotta figure at least it's a little bit OP, if not completely OP. Elemento, which is my favorite letter. That's what I used to say when I was a kid. I thought Elemento was an ampersand. I thought, like, Elemento as a letter was an ampersand. And that's where they were calling it out from. And then to my little, like, six-year-old brain, I didn't really think about, like, where L, M, and N, and O were going to go without it. But it still made sense to me in the moment. It was the heat of the moment. These first five, I'm just going to blast my way through his cover because I've got a laser pistol. And I do like how satisfying the laser pistol is. It's not as good as the Marines, though. I do think the Marine is probably the best starting character. 
that I've done so far. I've got about four or five hours played, and I think I probably play the Marine more than anybody else. The Marine does have some... Oh, shit, that's not good. Suicide bombers everywhere. And I'm out of ammo. I was going to say, if I can make them explodes, this, we can get ourselves some more shells, but... There are a lot of bullets coming after us. They're going to unload one last time, but if I take a shotgun blast straight perpendicular to this line right here, I wasn't going to be able to dodge it very well, and so I'm glad we were able to liquidate all of their bullety assets before that happened. Oh, we got a chest out of this room. And about ten shells. That's pretty good. It looks like we got liquor. Liquor and guns. The best combination ever. Double vision. One for each of you. Stars in their eyes. All right, let's take a look and see what double vision does. Yes, we got the RPG. So it's an active ability. It temporarily doubles the gun output. The favorite brew of two shot Arias. During her time in the gungeon, she claimed that drinking before a gunfight would double her effectiveness in combat, but for obvious reasons, she was not taken too seriously. Perhaps there was some truth in her tales. All right. Let's keep on trucking. As to the thought, in the last episode, I'd wanted to keep it to, like, one run per episode. I'm still not totally sure if that's going to work, by the way. We're going to play it by ear for the rest of the series. It's a nice thought, but at the end of the day, I don't know. I try to keep things structured for all the different series that I have going on, and it's just its weird how little things get in the way. It's weird how little things get in the way. I'd probably just keep an eye on it. And if it ends up being like a one-hour episode when I end up doing stuff like that, I'll probably just make it so that we only have a Gungeon episode like every two or three days or something like that. I will probably try to pick this one. And we failed. So that's what happens right there. We start with a lock pick. And you can make an attempt at picking the lock. If you fail, it breaks the lock and you can't get the item out of it anymore. You can, however, I think break the chest if you get really violent about it. Yeah. And then you get like junk or something like that. Next time, use a key. I don't think you can ever get the item out. I don't know exactly what junk does. It's just some junk. Yeah, it's got a passive thing going on for it. But I don't think it actually ever does anything or has any use. At least I haven't seen it. It would be funny if there was some random merchant down in the bottom of the dungeon somewhere that traded you junk for things. Like while you're running through, you came across them like randomly or whatever. I would accept that as an objective. That was a nice, simple little room that we were able to breeze through very, very rapidly. By breeze, I mean run up in here, shoot guns all over the place, and annihilate enemies. The lowercase r. We've got oranges and we've got grenade launchers. What does that do? That one's just flying off the shelves. A lowercase r. Is it a weapon? Oh, it is. It is a rare but not unheard of for abstract concepts to take gun form when discussed near the gungeon. It's the abstract concept of r. It spells bullet. bullet. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I'm sorry, I'm not a vandal. I, I shot his shop, I forgot, he got angry. Ooh. Smiley face, something for the collection, I will compensate you. The only thing I compensate you for is rusty spoons. You go back down in your hole, you weird slithery bastard. You terrify me and I don't want to be around you. Let's maybe teleport on back over to here. And I do think we have good enough guns to go after the boss right now. We'll just clear this out really, really fast. We got ourselves... I forget the boss's name. Either way, I'm just going to shoot him with bullet-themed sundries. I enjoy what's happening right now. This gun, I'm going to point out, does take a long-ass time to reload, though. So watch out for that. If I could bait him up underneath one of the chandeliers, I think we could get... A pretty superior amount of damage done. I'm going to jump just in case right there. Bullet! Bullet! He almost got me right there because I wasn't paying attention. It's actually a pretty decent gun aside from the crazy reload time. Like, the reload time, I think, is really one of the only detractors about this firearm. But other than that, the damage feels pretty good. The attack feels pretty good. Oh, man, that spread almost got me right there. We should be able to handle him without too many problems, I think. I want to reflect that bullet back at him with the thorn vest so badly. I don't know if this is going to be enough. Oh, almost lost my perfect right there. 
Almost lost it right there, too. I'm getting antsy because we're getting near the end of the line here. There we Oh, shit. There we go. Perfect. You know, at a certain point, you got to stop doing core. I think the point at which your stomach looks like a corn cob, that's when you should stop working on core. And that guy learned that lesson the hard way. He let his abs get in the way of his judgment. Oh, we got an RPG. And we got the master round for the first chamber. What does the RPG do? You know I'm going to have to use this almost exclusively just because it's fun to unload it on people. It's an RPG. I mean, how could you not use it? Everybody loves RPGs. A little bit of character development, a little bit of storyline, maybe some skill points. Reload time's a little bit... A little bit large, but... Oh, he dodged that one so perfectly. There. Second time around, we ain't gonna play. Maybe I should consider using a different gun. Let's do this. I don't know if it does superior damage to just like a normal pistol. Ooh, it is fun to use though. I love the little blam thing and then also the way that they proclaim bullet. Makes me happy. I wish I could proclaim bullet and just destroy my enemies. You just be like, bullet. Just look at him. Nowadays, that probably gets you locked up. Look at somebody and be like, bullet. With a threatening look on your face. Probably report you to some government agency. Does go through ammo, though. I'm always a little nervous about fighting those guys next to corners because every now and again their bullets go through corners. And that makes me sad when I think I have cover and then I find out I don't have cover. It's like my nightly bedroom experience all over again. My girlfriend's a blankie thief. Girlfriend's a big time ba blanky thief. Some people are blanky bandits. Is that Navi with a gun? I think that's a fairy with a gun. I think Legend of Zelda just got super real. Like Navi's about to go straight taxi driver on us. Not anymore. Now she did. She ain't doing shit today. Clip those wings a little bit. Ooh. The green guan stone, a chance to heal. What kind of chance to heal? The shield of the maiden is joined. I think we already had that. Chance to heal upon taking damage. Guan stone abhors pain and has a small chance to heal its bearer upon being wounded. It seems to grow more desperate as the risk of death arises. So it sounds like it's got some chance based, or I'm sorry, some RNG mechanic where it occasionally heals you when you get hit. And then the more damaged you are, maybe the higher the chances that you get healed when you get hit. Might be useful. It rotates around us, too, so we've got our little Binding of Isaac attachment here. I think we're done with this floor, so I'm going to jump on down to the next one. If I can't put a full run in each episode, I'm going to try and at least break off after a boss, basically. So we'll finish a dungeon lair. Break off after a boss. I just don't know how to structure stuff like this. I just don't know how to do it. Oh, good. we got snipers to deal with. They must spend a ton of money in this dungeon just renovating. Clearing out all the bullet holes and whatnot. Oof. Almost got me. Ah, got me on that one too. See what I mean? Like corners. They're... Oh, shit. The first one healed us though. We didn't take damage from the first one, so that's good. Guanstone holding it down and showing us how it works. Cool. Saved us from two damage on that floor, so that's really, really nice. That shit accumulates. That guy fired a letter X at me. Alright, so there's one wizard down. Bum, 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 bum. Sorry, that's the first, like, couple notes of the wizard and I. I don't know if people like musicals the way that I like musicals, so I never know. Like, referencing musicals, it's on the edge. It's on the edge. You're putting yourself in a one percenter type situation. When you're telling jokes and making references, a one percenter is like a reference you make that, like, one percent of people are gonna get it. And, like, you put it in the episode anyways because, eh, maybe you didn't have anything else written. Or maybe you just figure, oh, that came up at the perfect timing. Thank you. I would love to shoot someone with more bullet theme letter R's. That little douchebag definitely has to go. Otherwise, he's going to cause us some major headaches soon. Yeah, one percenters. Some people like one percenters. Some people think that one percenters are, like, the funniest jokes that there are. I forgot to reload. In a gun-themed game, that seems... 
pretty high up the list in terms of screw-ups. I almost got shot by one of the level 1 bullets. Ow, what the hell was that? Oh, it was him shooting me with his body again. Okay. Perfecto. Can't take that X right there. A little bit more damage done, and then we'll slot in a couple more bullets. Hopefully when we find the shop, we'll be able to take care of this more suitably because our health is a tad low. It's not that low, but I've had enough accidents in this playthrough now. That's where I'm starting to feel bad, and I need to get on top of this. Let's throw down a table. I'm not going to waste bullets on the damage soak right there. Instead, I think, yeah, that should blow up the wizard that was in his little summoning chamber. Yeah, musical references. A little bit of a one percenter right there because I think most people aren't into musicals. It's just kind of like a dying thing. I like them. I don't get to like participate in them as much as I would like. But I totally have a musical Pandora. I'm secure in my masculinity. I don't care. People can make fun of me for it. I've got like a Ghetto Boys Pandora. I've got like a punk rock Pandora. I've got a heavy metal Pandora. I've got a musical Pandora. I got it all. I got it all. There are a concerning amount of projectiles floating through the air right now. And I think that fixing that is probably a smart idea. There is a lot of stuff going on right now. I think I hit him a couple times already, but if I could just get rid of like some of these random little objects floating all over the place, I think we'd be in a lot better shape. Oh, it fires like the entire, yeah, it fires the entire word bullet every time you squeeze the trigger. Like I'm, I've been holding down the trigger the whole time, but I just tested it. You click for just like a microsecond and it fires off. An entire salvo of shots. Sorry, pal, you're first. What did we learn? Don't come around the don't come around the corner first. In you know that song, she's coming around, she'll be coming around the mountain. Replace that with she'll be coming around the corner. And you'll get the rough idea. You don't want to be that lady. That letter R fired at me weird. Oh, we got health back. That's fun. I can accept that. All you need is a solid boss clear too, and you should be alright. So is he still all butthurt and grumpy, or like, is he chill now? I think he's probably chill now. I still can't fire guns in the store, though. What kind of store won't let me discharge firearms inside of it? I tell you what, these lawmakers, they're getting out of control. They are getting out of control. I don't think I want to live in a... Oh, that curved around. I didn't think it was going to do that. That's surprising that it did that. What did I just learn about corners? Well, I learned that they will definitely mess with your life. I do have an RPG. And as of yet, I haven't really been using it that much. I was going to save it for a boss, though. See if I can knock some fatty chunks off his health this way. We've got a box right there. What do I put on this thing? Nothing. I thought maybe an offering of junk or something like that. I've got almost 400 rounds left for this. And while normally in real life I'd be like, dude, we got 400 rounds? Let's keep killing this afternoon. In video game, 400 rounds makes me feel nervous. It's a little bit past the danger zone for me. Please don't. I would very much like it if you would stop doing the thing that you're thinking about doing right now. I know you probably won't because you're obstinate like that, but... I would have... Oh, he got me with a sniper rifle while I was rolling into a wall. Where the hell is that other bullet coming from? What was that thing that just came off the ground right there? Like, something just came out of the ground and hit me. Oh, I'm so confused right now. So confused and suspicious and just don't know what's happening.
Yeah, this pistol's not automatic either, meaning I can't, like, gauntlet mode, hold down the attack, and it'll just keep shooting. I gotta click every single time I want it to go off. Okay, so there's our Gungeon boss. If we want to keep on surviving, we're gonna have to take him down almost flawlessly. Oh, we're gonna have to time this just right. I was gonna say, I don't know about that one. Oh, hey now. That one takes a gold key, I think, though. Like, we gotta beat the boss and get a gold key in order to make that work. However, what I can do is I've got so many bullets that I could come back here. Let's get the knife shield. Use again to launch. Oh, it's a secondary item. So how does it decide... Cool, I didn't even realize you could do that until just this episode. You can press shift to swap in between different active items. I didn't know you could carry multiple active items. Does he have an ability that lets him do that? Maximum item capacity and maximum ammo counts. Oh, it's an ability that he has. Okay, so that makes a little more sense why I wouldn't have noticed it with other characters. That's kind of cool, though. What does the knife shield do? We didn't look that up, so I just wanted to make sure I know what it does. Knife shield is a shield made of blasphemous knives. Be wary of using it as a bleed to bring upon the anger of the jammed. Okay. I'll probably take back my, my lockpick. I don't get to use it very often, but actually, could I use it on any of these chests? I forgot that I had the lockpick, in all honesty. The trusty lockpicks. I'm going to give it a go on this guy down here because I can't afford to get more keys and I wanted to safeguard my health. There we go. Freebie item. We got ourselves what looks like the Rubidine prototype. It never quits. So it's just like a bouncy... Wow, that thing reloads fast. Oh, wow, it fires really fast, too. Okay, it just doesn't have a lot of ammo. Gotcha, in case we need to unload on somebody. I wonder if I can run lockpicks on that thing. That seems unlikely. I'll try it after we beat the boss. Ah, we got the, the holster. He's a little bit tougher than I like. He takes skills. Which I don't necessarily really have. Gun does deal damage. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It does pretty well. feeling nervous about that, sorry. I don't think I should have used a... I don't know why I'm apologizing. It's a video game. That's the second part, is I don't know why I'm apologizing for poor performance in a video game here. I don't think that's something you should ever have to apologize for unless you're like on a pro esports team or something. It's like your job to be good at video games. There goes my second one. Oh man, he summoned up a little homie. Which is not something that I am satisfied with. I need to get out of this corner. You got me pinned super hard right now. Yeah, I knew I was going to take that hit right there. I knew it was going to happen. At a certain point, you just run out of ground to run to. And you're all out of tools. There we go. I can kill him pretty easily. The beholster... Yeah, if you leave his little guys up. Oh, they hurt me? Oh, that sucks. Why did they hurt me when I touch them when I just defeated their parent? Oh, that's brutal. I don't like that at all. Let's go extra ammo for this gun, I guess. And then we've got a Void Core Assault Rifle. Ooh. That'll be fun to play around with. He didn't drop a key, though. Hmm. Let's go see if we can lockpick this thing, then. Got a lot of, like, good weapons right now. We got a pretty solid selection. I'm happy with what we have going on. I think it's going to be this rotation right here. Cool. Ah, we snapped it off. I wonder if different chests have different chances to succeed when you use that thing on it. Like the golden chests, they tend to have way better loot. And so you would have like a higher chance to fail. I don't know. Either way, that boss is down. We're on the second floor of the Gungeon right now. I will see you all in later episodes of Enter the Gungeon. I'm thinking that just like the full run per go 
Well, I would have to have the NCE's blessing that they're not going to freak out when they only get an episode like once every three to four days or two to three days if I was going to do the hour to an hour and a half long episodes. Average runs about 50 minutes to an hour if I'm doing okay. And so maybe, I don't know, maybe this isn't, once this isn't like a mainline series, just in an organizational sense, I may backline it. Maybe we'll do like a, a Friday in the Gungeon type series or something like that where I just do like one big run of Gungeon. I don't know. Either way, let me know what you think down below. I'm sure that you'll have your own thoughts about it, and I would like to hear them. Bye, everybody. This is Enter the Gungeon. Get the game down below.